Glory to God. Welcome to the unction. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me on the unction tonight. I am Pastor Ray Curry. This is the unction where we give the word of God and depend on the spirit of God to edify the people of God. I want to start off by thanking the Lord for those of you who have supported this platform. Because of you, we are making an impact in this nation. I just received messages from uh, Texas. I'm not going to reveal everything unless I get permission, but there was a young man contacting me about many of the issues that we're speaking about that they have lived through and gone through. And this platform has encouraged them that they are making the right decisions to get away from ministry manipulation, to get away from spiritual and, and physical abuse and people who have been essayed in all sorts of issues that has happened in their organization. And the unction has reassured these groups of souls that they have gone in the direction of God. I want to tell you that we're making a real difference, and I appreciate it, and that's why I am determined to speak tonight because I am still getting inboxed. I am still getting letters. I am still getting emails from around the nation that what we're doing matters, that what we're doing is impactful. So I want to thank those of you who helped us to, to partner in this work, Veronica Renee, John Tay Cooper, Angel Lawrence, Jackie Evans, Carlton Mendez, Nicole Mo Morales, Patsy Murray, Michelle Chambliss, Ye Fat Pruitt, Nita, my, my sister, Linda Shelton, also Rosina, uh, Jean Scout, Reggie, Diplomat Legacy, I love that name, Adiana, Prophetess Quenisha, of course, Karen Keys, Michael Brown, uh, Sharice Hennant, Cheryl, Cheryl Ruiz, Carrie Seeley, uh, Mary Rucker, Michelle Lawrence, Odette Dorsey, Carrie Seeley, again, um, Damon, De Deborah Spear, Jean Scow, I saw you twice. You, you've been a blessing. Reggie was a blessing again. Diplomat Legacy again. Adiana again. People who have given to this platform and allowed us to exist. Uh, and, and this time I was rushing so much I said, if I see their name, I'm putting it down. And some of you have been faithful in allowing this platform to go forth. And I want you to know that we see you and that you're making a real difference in the world. As I stated before, this word is getting out to Africa. This word is getting out into the Middle East. People all over the world are starting to see what we're saying and waking up. That's why even on the, the graphic I put, you, you see uh, Ebenard Jordan. Let, let me go back here. You see Ebenard Jordan and the, the mystics that he's been around. You see um, the, the young lady down there at New Birth that Jamal Bryan has had a relationship with. You look down, you see... Um, What's that man named Greg Locke, along with Benny Hinn. Then you look over and see Pastor Chris in Benny Hinn. Uh, you even see Jake's in the mix. And uh, you'll know why I brought up all of these figures. I have many reasons tonight to speak out, but mainly I must speak out because people need to know how to get away from this foolishness. People need to know how to escape and not to be afraid when they see the enemy, not to be afraid when they see these people speak because they are prognosticators or, or diviners or they know something. I want to tell you a secret. People say, oh, he knew my mama name. Some of your mamas wasn't living right. <laughs> uh, oh, he, he knew my daughter name. Some of your daughters ain't living right. Oh, uh, they told me where I live. Some of you not living right. The fact of the matter is that there is something in the church called a familiar spirit, uh, and it, it's not of God. And we need to understand the difference between the prophetic and familiarity. And uh, sometimes we receive information and think, oh, they, how would he know unless God told him? But there's a lot of people who allow satanic passage into their existence, and we have to be careful of these things. I appreciate you, Kawana. Uh, Sister Rosina, my friend, Deborah Spear, Alicia Davis. It says some ministers are telling people that if they complain about the church, they should just leave. What about Ephesians 5? Aren't we supposed to speak up when we see error? Absolutely. 
Nene said, this is going to be lit. I hope it is going to be lit. I, I want to uh, speak to you tonight and let you know it's time for you to stop being afraid of witches. Let me show you something in the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, I'm going to read tonight because this was unplanned. Exodus chapter 22, you can go back and read these scriptures. In verse 18, thou shall not suffer a witch to live. Don't even allow it. Don't even allow it. That's what it means by thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, what, what I need to understand is witchcraft, very simply, is any manip manipulation of reality through ungodly, unsanctioned means. Witchcraft simply is any manipulation of reality through unsanctioned and ungodly means. You know what? If you work, you get paid. If you are with your spouse, eventually, if everything's normal, you have a baby. If you are prudent in your dealings, then you see increase. But when you are lazy, you are trifling, you don't do anything, and some warlock tells you, sow into me, give me money, and then I'll just start screaming at the sky for you, and you're going to get magical money to come to you. He's a liar. He's a liar. And what's happened is the church has gotten to a point where we have turned away from obeying God and going to witches and warlocks and wanting some manipulation of reality. And um, it, it, it's really a shame how we're skipping over obedience. I need to say what I'm saying. We are skipping over obedience and wanting magic. Some people walk in the flesh day and night, week after week. They don't discipline themselves. They won't pray. They won't read their Bibles. But then they'll go somewhere talking about, I want deliverance. No, you don't. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And he should not even think he'll receive anything from the Lord. You can't walk out doing whatever you want to do at all times. Now, that, here's the thing. Some things, yeah, it might be demonic. But if you read the word of God, most times it's the work of the flesh. It's the works of the flesh. Save our families, Rosina. They try to say you will receive mir miracle money if you sow. Let, let me get my comments back up here. I found out I can do something a little bit. That This is what we say. Miracle, miracle, miracle. And, and I, I, the Bible says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And the way you bring these powers and principalities down, you go to the word of God. There's something I, I speak of all the time. I'm going to bring it up because someone might have never heard it. Next time you go to a deliverance ministry and everybody getting delivered every two weeks when the scriptures clearly say whom the sun set free is free indeed, I want you to read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen, here's so much for your deliverance ministry. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 starting in verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. It was common. It means it was happen happening habitually. And this is Apostle Paul's recommendation of it. Listen. Such fornication as is not much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. When this man had willful, open, habitual rebellion against God, Apostle Paul didn't call for a deliverance service. He didn't say to cast out one devil. He said, cast out that man. Ain't that something? Now, that don't sound like Isaiah, Salvador, and all them. That don't sound like them. Apostle Paul said, you got willful, continual, habitual disobedience among you. He said, nah, we, we ain't going to worry about casting out the devil. That's the work of the flesh. Your fleshly, cast him out because he won't sin. He won't wickedness. And you know what? The Bible goes on to say we gave one over to Satan. He says we give him over to Satan. Verse 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan. This is 1 Corinthians 5 and 5. Wow. He delivered him over to the chief demon. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now, that's some deep stuff right there. There's some deep stuff right here. 
Not only did he not cast out the fornication demon, the sexually immoral demon, he delivered him over to the chief demon so that he can get his butt whooped real good. Now, I'm not, you got to have a, a higher sense of revelation to understand what Apostle Paul was saying. He's saying basically since you want the world, then you go ahead under the world system so that you can get your behind whooped real good. God love who he chasteneth. And the Lord is able to use even the devil as a switch to whoop you real good, cause you to repent and come back to God. That's what he's saying. So I, I don't want anyone to think that we're inviting demons or saying that someone should go to a demon. I want you to understand what Apostle Paul was doing. He was allowing him to be reinculturated into the world system in his ways so that the enemy could be used like a switch in God's hand so that young man's soul could be saved through a good whooping, God loving who he chasing it. Now, this is the stuff that we skip over in the Bible because once again, we have these grifts. We, we, we want to make money. We want to look more spiritual than we are. So you got these people playing around with demons and, 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 playing, and playing around with spirits for a whole bunch of people that's walking in their flesh. John 8 and 3, absolutely. Whom the son set free is free indeed. And when a whole bunch of people talking about the devil on me every week, a lot of you need to uh, figure out whether or not you belong to Christ or not. I'm just being honest with you. And God got power. And, and what you always have to ask yourself is, why is it that these people with all this power and anointing, listen, and I'm one, the spirit of the Lord has come upon me that demons have been cast out. I've, I've experienced this. I've received words of prophecy, words of knowledge. I've experienced these things. I'm not a cessationist. I can't deny the things that I've seen the Lord do. What I'm saying to you is, for you to be Superman, why don't we go to the insane asylums? For you to be Superman, why don't we go to the hospitals and do the jail houses, whether truly uh, deranged or why is it that I, these demons, these demons put on suits and come to church and come and, 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 and worship and start worshiping and, and then they start acting. All I'm saying is we're not what we say we are. Not saying that there's not a ministry of deliverance that God don't set people free. I'm not a cessationist. What I'm saying is what happens in the church, what happens in the church is we are becoming dependent on men. We are becoming dependent on women. We are suffering a witch to live. And then after they give you your experience, they take your soul forever. After you get your little experience, they take your soul forever. That's why you got people changing their last name to Elias. Yeah, I'm going to say it. That's why you have a whole group of people changing their last name to Elias. You have people leaving their husbands. People leaving their wives, following some man full of lust. And that's why you do it, because you're full of lust. And God going to get you. These are the type of things that the church is going into. Once we have our little experiences, now we're at a point where we can't listen to the word of God. I said it before. This is what trips me out about this generation. If I read the scriptures, people tell me, be quiet, you hater. You, you don't have to know that you don't understand spiritual things. But if I get on stage and say I had a vision that Batman swooped down off a building and said this same scripture to me, these same people think I'm deep. I can read out of the Bible and I'm wrong. But as long as I said I heard a voice, I had a vision, I had a dream, Aquaman came and, and uh, swooped up on a dolphin and told me for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Long as I put it in a dream, long as I put it in a vision, I'm deep. Oh, you need to follow him. He's, he's a miracle. There, there are things I'm seeing people on the internet, bless their hearts, and I'm not, some people I know are gifted, and, and I pray that the Lord use them mightily. I am seeing so-called prophets literally prophesying the scriptures, but they just saying I heard a voice, I, I had a dream. And I'm like, I read the same thing. We talking about economic disaster. We talking about a pandemic. 
We talking about uh, unrest in governments. I'm talking about the same things that I've read in scripture and I know it's coming. Having to change our diets, get ourselves healthy. All the different things that I'm reading in scripture that talk about a time of Jacob's trouble. And I can I can get these things from the word of God. But because somebody said, oh, I, I had a dream. I, I turned my lights off on, and, and back on five times. And then I heard a voice say, touch my knees. And then when I touched my knees, he said, make sure you eat right so you don't have arthritis. And, and then when, when they do that, oh, man, these are the deepest people in the world. And then everybody run after them. I am almost, I'm so frustrated now. I'm almost ready to just go ahead and say I am chief apostle, prophet, Pope Ray of the seven churches of Narnia. And, and I, I feel like teaching the same scriptures and just saying an angel told me last night, follow peace with all men. You're going to need divine connections. And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. God is requiring now a level of holiness in the believer that you can have a connectivity in the realms of the spirits. I am almost at a point where I just want to put on a pointy hat, one of them pointy hats, like a Catholic, and, and go from church to church with a shiny suit, and, and just tell everybody that I am running for vice Jesus and and I had a dream. And then it, it, I'm serious. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated at churchianity. I'm getting frustrated at churchianity. The Bible says, thou shalt not suffer which to live. Now, let me help you to understand this. As soon as... As there is a manipulation of reality, listen to what I'm saying. Some of you think that you got, look at Ibn R. Jordan. Look at him with all those mystics at the top and that dot in the middle of his forehead and the release of his third eye and the kundalini and the snake going up the spine and, and the releasing of the energy and the chakras and so We think, all oh, that is a witch. I need you to understand, as soon as, as your pastor starts to make you do stuff you don't want to do, you're under a warlock. As a pastor, I do need to push. As a pastor, I do need to teach. As a pastor, I do need to help people to achieve their highest potential and goal because if you don't push people, they will settle for less. But... There is a place where it goes from inspiration to coercion. When you're not inspired by your pastor or challenged by your pastor and you're starting to feel coerced by your leadership, you are dealing with a warlock, witchy leadership. And the Bible said, don't suffer it to live. Don't suffer it to live. You tell those people that you are God's free men when you can't speak up and say I'm tired when you can't speak up and say I need to spend time with my family this weekend when you can't speak up and say I just don't have it this week when you're under somebody that say sister they, and you don't have it and you'll never have it because you can't obey the prophet you you need to push sister I'm telling you dig deep when you're under somebody like that where they got you doing things through compulsion and not challenging you or inspiring you, but it's more or less coercing you, when you get to that point, you are under witchy, warlockish leadership. It's time to go. And I, I, I got to say what I got to say today. I don't care who gets upset. I don't care who gets mad. I got to tell the truth. It is time to go. It is time to leave these witchy, warlockish churches and ministries and that's why i am grateful for this platform we have people across the nation that's why i'm on here on a special time tonight i've had individuals from across the nation contacting us saying pastor ray we're going through the same things and i want us to get connected every way we can because god knows there are issues that's about to come upon this earth and we need to have a relationship with one another and a relationship with God. And we need to be connected in one space. But we need to be somewhere where we know we're not being abused. And that's why I love the unction. That's why I love the, those of you who are here. 
Providence Quinesia say, anytime someone says they're a chief apostle, I know they're false. Jesus is the only chief cornerstone. I totally agree. Remember, there's like begging for a king. Absolutely, we do the same thing. I, I would like to say this. As, as the scripture says, let me, let me go. Let me go to the scriptures because I am one. I believe in standing on the word of God. Make sure I'm right here. Ephesians chapter 2, 19 and 20. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That is a great scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. I'm going to get into some self-importance. Because I, I, I got to bring some stuff down. I got to bring some stuff down today. Stay with me. Stay with me. Here's the point. There are people who get confused on what the foundation is. They think, and, and I got to say this, we can talk about the validity of modern apostles, modern prophets. I'm not here to argue that point tonight. But to those of you who feel apostolic or prophetic, Here's what I need you to understand. You're not the foundation of the church. Let's go ahead and get this over with. The foundation that was laid is already laid. Christ is the bedrock. Christ is the chief cornerstone. And it's built on a foundation of apostles and prophets. The apostles and prophets that the church proper is built upon is, is this, this, not you. You might be a church planter. You might start a fellowship. You might start a, um, a, a particular work within the kingdom, but we can't do nothing. We can't do nothing beyond the scripture. Anything we do, we have to do within the confines of the word of the Lord. And sometimes we think that because we feel an apostolic mandate or a prophetic mandate, that that means the church proper is built on us. And it's not. It's not. No other foundation can be laid. And when you think that way, this is why we end up with cults of personality. This is why we end up with cults of personality. And you have people changing their last name once again to Elias or changing their last name to Java and all of this kind of foolishness because we've been hoodwinked by these wizards and warlocks. Let me take you to the scriptures. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to take you to Romans. Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, here's the point, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Let me say that again. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, According as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, I'm going to go five, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, rather prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Just, just just, say your prophecy or go to the proportion of faith. Let's keep going. Or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And I'll stop at verse 9. 
Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Apostle Paul said, the reason why we're going through crazy stuff is because some of you are thinking of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. You're thinking of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. The foundation is already laid. The Bible says that we got to be careful how we build on this foundation. It's already laid. And that's why I, I, I get annoyed at the chief apostles. I get annoyed at the genos of the world and the followers of the genos of the world because you have this cult of personality where you think ain't nobody like mine. And if you don't, they say if you're not under an apostle, here's what tripped me out. They say if you're not under, under an apostle, your church in error. And I say, you know what? I'm glad you said that. I am under an apostle. His name is Apostle Paul. Jesus Christ ordained Apostle Paul to be the apostle represented to the Gentiles. I am so glad that I am not without apostolic leadership. The word of God is written. You need a divine interpreter. I, I agree with that. I do need a divine interpreter of the divine word of God. It's called the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when he is come, he will guide you in all truth. That's why this platform is called the auction. Let me, once again, can I go to the word of God? I like to stay in the scriptures because people think more highly than they ought to think. And, and I want I want to go. Let me let me see where good Lord Almighty. It says in First John chapter two and starting at verse twenty seven. First John chapter two twenty seven. And I you know the reason why I knew first John two and twenty, that's what our whole ministry is built on the unction. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. And I knew it was in the same chapter. I said, Lord help me remember. I'm I'm live and going off the top of the head. Verse twenty seven, but the anointing, which is the same word unction, which ye have received, caress, you have received of him abideth in you. And here's the verse. And ye need not that any man teach you. Oh, my goodness. That don't sit well for cult leaders. That don't sit well for cult leaders. Well, how you explain? How can you heal without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he was sent? Let me explain the word to you because your cult leader won't. So let me keep reading. Ye have need, you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Here's what that means. Yes, we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers in the church. And the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? How can you preach unless he was sent? Okay. But ultimately, the one that unpacks the word, gives divine understanding and revelation is not a man is not a man you cannot listen to me and say i heard from ray so i'm no longer gonna ask the holy spirit what this scripture mean ray told me what it meant and so now i'm not going on the holy ghost i'm not going on the bible no more i've heard from ray that is enough and that's what eugenos do that's what you Gino worshipers do. Y'all get on my platform and say Gino 12 times before y'all say Jesus. Pastor, pastor, pastor. And it clearly says on Gino's website that he's your teacher, your apostle, your overseer, and your guide. And guide is a God title. That is a Holy Ghost title. Jesus said when the Holy Ghost has come, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all of the truth. And that's why it says in 1 John chapter 2 in verse 27 that the anointing would teach you and you have not any need for a man to be that sage. That's what's wrong with you lowly followers. You don't care about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit for what? You got lowly. You Java followers. Holy Spirit for what? You got Java. 
And now your marriage done fell apart. Your home done fell apart. Your children can't stand you. You giving up all your money and you are settling for a man when you can be guided by the Holy Ghost yourself. And that's why I keep on praising God for loving the Lord and having the life that I live. Because I grew up in a ministry where everyone depended on a man and a woman. I grew up in that situation. That's why I can tell the story. That's why I can talk about it. You people who just now getting around to that kind of environment don't impress me. That's why I'm not impressed by Gino. That's why I'm not impressed by Lovey. That's why I'm not impressed by your chief apostle. I grew up with a cult of personality. And I'm telling you, it ends in disaster. And if you don't learn to go by the Holy Spirit and the word of God, you're going to find out real quick. You're going to find out one day when your whole life done passed you by and you're on life 2.0. Because Ray Curry is on life 2.0. I know what it is to live life after the cult. I know what it is to live life after the personality uh, following it. And whatever the man of God say, whatever the woman of God say, living in constant fear. But I found out that God answer prayer. Whenever you serious about him, I found out that I don't need to go through nobody else. I found out that there was one Lord, one faith, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I found out that when I call, he'll answer. And because I found that out, I've never been afraid again. And I tell people all the time, all you so-called prophetic people who are under a witch, you so-called anointed people that's under a warlock and talking about you got all this power and anointing, but you afraid of some man, afraid of some woman. If you ever hear God thunder from heaven, you will stop being afraid of a human. You lying. Ain't no way in the world you heard the voice of the Lord. Ain't no way in the world God is talking to you. When you hear the Lord thunder from his mountain, when you hear the Lord speak from heaven, you will never be afraid of a man ever again. You will never be afraid of a woman ever again. That's why I love my theologians. I love my homiletics. I love my hermeneutics. I love my system of studying. I love all of that. But at the end of the day, God is alive. And when somebody have an encounter with the Lord, not just uh, an intellectual ascent, but when somebody run into the real Jesus, he will set you free and you will know the truth. You will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It will make you free. I can't even get bound. I, I can't get bound at this point. I got too much of the word. I got too much of the Holy Ghost. You can't trick me. You can't trick me to save your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. We should not think of ourselves above what we ought to think. Let me show you something because, saints of God, you, you got all these people who, I'm the apostle, I'm the prophet, I'm the, I'm the evangelist, I'm the, I'm the pastor. I'm the teacher. I'm going to show you something in the book of Acts. I read these scriptures all the time. It says that Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 20 call all the elders together. I keep teaching this because the church won't teach it. I keep teaching this because somebody comes on here new that never heard this before. I'm going to teach you something. Elder, overseer, pastor, we're all interchangeable terms. Your chief apostle ain't going to tell you that because he want you to think he's special. Your, your chief prophetess, your super prophetess mother, mother, ain't going to tell you that because she want you to think she's special. I'm going to show it to you. Acts chapter 20, he calls the elders in verse 17, and from Miletus he sent, Acts 20, 17, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Now, this is who he's talking to. When we get over Acts chapter 20, verse 28, he's speaking to the elders. What does he say to the elders? Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, that's Episcopos, the elders, Presbyteros. He's made you overseers, Episcopos. To feed the church of God, that's the shepherd. 
to feed the church of God. That's the shepherd. To feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. He told the elders to oversee and to feed the flock. He told the Presbyterians to be bishops, overseers, episcopos, to feed the flock, which is the shepherd teacher, the pastor. So we got the chief apostles thinking of themselves more highly than they ought to think that want you to think, oh, they got some kind of high rank that, oh, they just better than everybody else. Let me tell you something. If you if you are one of the, I'm going to use a term that it, it don't even make sense, five-fold. Oh, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble. Don't go nowhere. I love y'all. Don't go nowhere. Some of y'all knew and y'all don't know I'm really, I am in the book. In the Greek, it's apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. It's the shepherd, teacher. It's the shepherd who teaches. That's the Greek. And he gave some apostles and some prophets. Listen to the difference. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. It, it was not separated. Pastors and teachers. It's the fourth off office. But we, for vernacular sake, I'm going to call it the five-fold. Sure. I'm going to call it that for vernacular sake. Sometimes we think we're in the higher up of the five-fold and don't realize that Jesus said, let the greatest among you become the servants of all. That's why Apostle Paul said, I think God put us apostles forth last. Even though they are the preeminent ones in the ministry, the way that God would allow the apostles to suffer, he said, I think God put us apostles forth last. And, and, and let me show you how Apostle Peter, who looked Jesus who looked Jesus in the face on earth. I'm going to show you what Apostle Peter does. L listen to this. Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read. The elders, the elders, which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder. Lord, have mercy. Apostle Peter was humble enough to say, I want to speak to you, elders. I'm an elder just like you. I'm among you, brothers. But I just want you to know also, I'm a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also partaker of the glory that should be revealed. He let them know, I am an apostle now. I'm a witness of his sufferings. But he had enough humility to help them to understand, I'm an elder, just like your elders. Verse 2, feed the flock of God. There go the pastor again. Lord, have mercy. There go the shepherd teacher. There go the shepherd teacher. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the oversight. That's the bishop. There's the overseer. Apostle Paul said it. Apostle Peter say it, feed the flock, elder, take the oversight, bishopric. Lord have mercy. The Gentiles love authority. The Gentiles love authority. I'm the man. I'm in charge. Look at the word. Feed the flock of God, verse 2, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Don't do this thing like, oh, God. I'm sick of this. Don't act like you doing the church no favor. Do it willingly or stop. I'm tired of pastors acting like they are crucified on the cross like Jesus was, like they suffering so much for you with a $2,000 suit on and a $20,000 Rolex and a private jet and act like, oh, I'm just suffering so much for you all. Why don't you all love me? Wow, oh, I'm, you all have let me down. And these pastors who guilt trip, the witchcraft, manipulation of reality, manipulation of energy through unsanctioned means and ungodly means, 
come and act like they're just doing so much for the church and the church is letting them down. That's a witch guilt tripping you. It says if you can't do it willingly, don't do it. Don't do it by constraint. Don't do it like you're doing the church a favor to be a pastor. If you ain't going to do it willingly, don't do it. And it says not for the money, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. We can't do this thing for money. God knows I don't do it for money, Mike Todd. God knows I don't do it for money, Mike Todd. Took them people money and spent $4,000 in their face to play with Apple goggles. And go use it in a sermon because, you know, if you use the equipment in a sermon, then you can say it's a ministry apparatus and you can pay it off and you can write it off later on in your taxes. But you're going to play and then people face and act like, oh, you needed some goggles to do a sermon. And those things got $4,000 and you got people out there really hurting and you just playing in their face. You don't do this thing for filthy Lucas sake. And then he's so childish. The boy is an infant. Mike Todd is so much of an infant. He thinks somebody jealous about his VR goggles. Boy, you silly. You silly. Number one, it's the first iteration of the technology. They're going to have to work out some more things. I wouldn't even buy the first iteration of the technology. Number two, there's going to be competing technology to come out that drive down the price. Why would I pay $4,000 for if, if I were filthy, nasty, stinking rich? I wouldn't waste my money on something that dumb. My brain cells work. I, I'm, I'm not silly. Grow up, boy. Ain't nobody impressed about no VR goggles. What I'm telling you is you silly and you're doing things for filthy lucre. I'm tired of this spirit in the church. But, but look at verse 3. It says, pastors neither shouldn't serve, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. I was on uh, my other platform on Facebook, and a man came on. He was so mad at me because I quoted this scripture. I said, we're not lords over God's heritage. There was a preacher who got mad at somebody in the congregation. The person was obnoxious. Their child was obnoxious. The child was screaming and hollering. The phone was ringing. It was really improper and obnoxious. Someone should have gotten them, told them to come step out to the side. They should have said, can you please be respectful? There's a whole service here. Uh, maybe you want to leave your child in children's church. If not, could you step out? Or, or could you take your phone? Other people are trying to seek the Lord or study. But the pastor, being a lord over God's heritage, lost his temper. He lost his temperance as a leader, went out into the congregation, took the person's phone, and broke it on the ground and, and damaged that person's property, broke that person's property. We're not lords over God's heritage. And when I said we're not lords over, the, over God's heritage, I had a preacher arguing me down that hey, you, you got to have some kind of authority. Absolutely. We, we obey them to have the rule over us. They watch for our soul that they may do it with joy and not with grief. That is people who have submitted to our leadership and, and therefore they, they want to abide in a fellowship and move in the same direction together. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But his concern was rulership and lordship. Once again, going back to Jesus Christ, the Gentiles love authority. The Gentiles love authority. That's the mindset of the church. People want to rule you and tell you, and I'm the pastor, and we're the, the leading later. And going back to going back to Lord Jesus, my voice is all kind of messed up tonight. I be squeaking every. Going back to one of my first discussions on this platform. The first family ain't Jesus. These first families, these first ladies and all this stuff. First of all, it's not even biblical. It's not even biblical. My wife got to be in subjection to me. And my wife got to be my help me. And my children have to be in subjection. The Bible tells the younger people to submit to the elders of the church. Submit to the older saints in the church. Treat them as fathers. Treat them as mothers. You respect the older saints in the church. Now, the people in the church, out of love, consideration, and, 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 and uh, charity, must understand that, yes, my family has sacrifices. Yes, they share the, their father with the whole ministry. They share their mother with the whole ministry. And, and they come and, and get whatever amount of their parents that they can get after their parents have ministered to others. 
and my church loves them enough to remember even the sacrifices of my children. But at the same time, we don't deify the first family. That is sickness. That is a sickness. These are cults of personality. Stop deifying your pastor. Stop deifying your leading lady in this first family. Oh, we just honor them. You're a liar. You're a liar. You struggling and, and getting by yourself, but to impress these so-called leaders, you giving your last dime. And then these we wonder why men don't want to go to church and why men don't want to help because I'm working hard. Let me tell you something. There are men who work hard to give their money to their family to bless their wife, but then they'll sit there and watch their wife give all the money to the pastor. And then you wonder why the man don't want to go to your church. Because he sees that his wife got more respect for, for you than he had for him. Oh, well, that's his fault. No, it is a woman being indoctrinated every week. And not only that, society. Society is lying. It says, I was under a pastor who kept saying he was the pastor. That's a mind problem. Ain't no first nothing. You right, Pastor Curry. They want to be Christ like. Let, let me. I, I let, let me let me help you. Saints of God. <laughs> I want us to put this thing all right. I'm getting calls all over the nation. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna digress a little bit because I'm reading some things. I want us to put this thing on right. I'm getting calls all over the nation about infidelity, about coercion, about children, uh, the wrong things happening to children. I'm getting calls from all over the nation about pastors. Like I said, I'm the pastor. I'm the pastor. Let me tell you something. Whoever in charge don't have to keep saying I'm in charge. If you're in charge, be in charge. I don't have to keep proving it. As the pastor of our ministry, I do what I can to, to regulate and make sure things run smoothly. And it's one of two things. It's either this fits, you, you understand the vision of this house, you understand what I'm doing, and you're ready to walk together in the vision. And if you're not able to walk together in the vision, then I, I will understand if you're dismissed. I, I understand that. And I love you when you go. When you can't leave a ministry in peace, which... I'm trying to hit everything I can hit tonight. I'm sorry. I'm everywhere. I, I got to tell the truth tonight. When you can't leave a ministry in peace, which I hope y'all chop this up. I hope y'all will send this out. I hope that y'all tell everybody you can. When, when Paul and John Mark could not come to a peace agreement, Apostle Paul said that was that was a hot contention between them. And Apostle Paul went one way, and John Mark, and I believe Barnabas went another way. Okay, and then you had Paul and Silas going the other way. All right? Now, you know what I didn't notice? Apostle Paul didn't say, y'all ain't saved. Y'all don't have the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't know Jesus. Apostle Paul had a different mission. Apostle Paul had a different work. Barnabas and John Mark did not understand Paul's assignment at the time. So they split ways. They didn't call each other devils. They didn't say, oh, well, you're not in the body of Christ because you're not over here with me. They split ways. And later on in Apostle Paul's life, he said, hey, when you come back, to, I think he was in prison, he said, when you come back, he said, make sure you bring John Mark with you. There was peace in the end. When you can't leave a ministry, and, and just say, listen, I did not agree with them on this, but I know that man loved Jesus. I, I, I think he misguided right there, but I know that man loved Jesus. And he is a holy man. He is a righteous man. I just I didn't agree with the, the, the direction of his ministry at that time. But I don't see anything morally wrong in him. I don't see anything spiritually uh, deplorable in him. I just did not think. What he was doing at the time was the direction we should go in. And I felt like the Lord had a different work for me to do. And I'm going to go over here and do it. Why people can't leave in peace? Why people can't leave in peace? 
Um, I, once, once again, if you would like to be a blessing to this platform, we're standing together. My uh, PayPal and Zelle is raythepreacher at gmail.com. My uh, cash app is uh, dollar sign the unction for this platform. It, it helps to, we have been feeding folk, we've been housing folk, we've been helping folk, we have been keeping operations going. God knows, uh, I, I can't wait to next month where we start sending um, contributions to many of you. Like I said, we're starting with Prophetess Quadisha. Because we, we just want you to go do something in the name of Jesus Christ and let people know that we love them. And people go look at you like, what do you want in return? I'm going to tell you something. I set up, I'm, I'm going to get back to what I'm talking about. I set up a food stand and I started serving hot dogs with the works and chips and sodas. And I stood on the corner and people were driving up and I'm up here witnessing and just giving the gospel and telling people the truth. And, and food was just... I, I mean, I ain't know hot dogs were so attractive. And people was coming around, and they were looking at me like, so uh, how much does this cost? I said, I, I love you in Jesus' name. They say, yeah, but what you want. That's how bad the church is. That's how bad preachers been to the community. I'm up here saying, take this stuff and go in Jesus' name. And, and But you know what? I want you all to be able to go out and show people there are souls who really do care. There are people who still care about others, and we're just doing things for the love of God, nothing more. And I, and I want y'all to be able to do that, so I want you to to be able to do that in these communities uh, starting next month and do it in Jesus' name. That's what this platform going to do, and it's only the beginning. Somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's going to get delivered. But going back to what I was talking about, leaving in peace, when you leave a ministry— I'm almost out of here. When you leave a ministry and the people of that ministry are so conniving, so vindictive that you can't leave in peace. I'm not here to talk about you. I'm not here to scorn you. I just feel y'all going in a direction I don't understand. And you can't leave in peace without somebody saying uh, he's a bad person, she's a bad person, which warlocks, you're not a part of the body of Christ. You're in a personality cult. I think a pastor that has to keep telling people that he's a pastor, I believe they're not sure of their call or they feel threatened. Absolutely. Absolutely. They feel threatened. And, and, and saints of God, we got to understand that the Bible said don't, don't suffer which you live. I'm almost out of it because I, I said witches, cults, and concubines. There's something in church that people don't know about and, and I'm almost out of here, but there's something that people in church don't understand about, and it's, it's called um, sex magic. Sex magic. And that's why you have these pastors who will never get married or take forever to get married. When they do get married, everybody's still questioning it like this. Everybody's still scratching their heads because they have kept their ministry together with their loins. They have allowed women in the church to think their time is going to come up. Just like this church out of Texas that I was just called about. I'm not going to speak on it right now until I get permission from them because I don't want to get them in any type of issues with family, friends, close loved ones. But there's a church in Texas that uh, the, the bishop, so-called bishop, he, he done made himself a chief apostle now. And he's married someone 30, 40 years, his junior. And, and he keeps trying to explain it in the Bible. Brother, if you just want somebody younger, just want them. You don't, you don't have to try to bring Jesus into you. If your wife is dead, which you was already cheating on, and then you, you grab this woman, all right, just go on with the woman. But then on top of that, he was also laying with the administrator or, or the, uh, one of the lawyers that went to the church. He was laying with her, and because he married the younger one and – played around on the lawyer or the attorney, whatever the case may be. Now the attorney is airing everything out and letting everybody know. But unfortunately, the man has bewitched the congregation so badly that now all of them are gaslighting on his behalf. 
Oh, no, nah, no, nah, it, it ain't like that. It, it, it ain't no, no, it's just something that happened one time in discretion. Let me tell you something. If you are a so-called pastor, bishop, or overseer, and you did something within your bishopric, and you did not give an account for that, and it comes up to the surface, you got to give an account for that. I tell people don't use the scripture loosely because many are in disobedience. That is rebellion, which is a form of witchcraft. Absolutely. Um, I, I want you to understand, saints of God, that there are pastors who peacock. Look for these peacocking pastors. I'm almost out of here. Look for these peacocking pastors. Look for these pastors who uh, try to have a an image and a lure even since, you got to be careful, saints, colognes, scents. Some of these pastors are so wicked they wear pheromones. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Some of these pastors are so wicked they wear pheromones, which are these uh, scents that will get in the opposite gender and cause them on a biological level to want them or to become aroused. Some of these pastors, we talk, mm, he smell good. Girl, he wearing pheromones with that cologne and he is purposely using potions. He don't view it as that. He's just thinking, oh, I, I, I smell good, I look good. These people are using potions on you to get you to be allured to stay in their ministries. Staying in their ministries. Saints of God, we got to catch all of this witchcraft and bring all of this stuff down in these churches. We got to bring all this stuff down in these churches, saints of God. And you got to become aware of the tactics that's used. That's why I put this, this thing up here. You got people who are whole live a part of industry. Look at, and I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to... um. I'm not going to say who. I'm going to just let you look at this folder and look at the possible concubines uh, from Jamal Bryant's church. I'm not going to say who. I'm going to just let you look at it and say there might be some possible concubines somewhere on here from Jamal Bryant church. So you can't say I called nobody a concubine. So everybody who want to call me out of Atlanta. Everybody who want to message me, inbox me out of that letter. I ain't calling nobody a concubine. I just said, look at the picture and pick out who you think I'm talking about. People who date pastors for prestige. People who date pastors for position. Pastors who's been doing a form of sex magic in their ministries. But these people who date pastors for position, date pastors to go high up in the ranks with no real qualifications to do it. You got people in the church who are praying for God people, want somebody to be saved, want somebody to be delivered. They can't even be seen. In fact, they get pushed back. You too spiritual. I want somebody trying to be cute so that I can attract the young people. And the young people on their way to hell. The young people on their way to degradation. The young people don't understand the destroyer that's about to be released into this nation because people keep playing with God and they don't understand it. But what you want, you want to heap to yourself a harem of women who think you cute. And you look, these preachers look like thumbs. Hallelujah, Jesus. God help these thumb gumby looking preachers. And they become preachers because they, they never could get women no other way. They funny looking. They funny looking. That's why I say I, I won't even pretend to be a lover. I won't even pretend to be that one. I thank God. I'm not going to say I'm ugly, but I, I will say, <laughs> I say I thank God for my wife. I thank God for little, the beautiful Tabitha. I, I won't even sit here and pretend like I'm somebody lover. It's funny. These, some of these preachers look like bats. Some of these preachers look like foots and have the nerve to put on an expensive suit and get a haircut and some glasses to cover up three-fourths of their face. And, and somehow, some way, you cute now. And, and you're using 
allure and pheromones and cologne to trick some sad woman into thinking you halfway decent looking. I'm just telling the God honest truth. I'm, I keep saying I'm almost out of here. I feel like a Baptist preacher and a Pentecostal preacher right now. Those are two of the lioness preachers. I'm almost out the way. Make sure we do everything according to the word of God. Um, sometimes we do things according to association because we're part of fellowships. And w- listen, I need everybody to listen to me. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, whatever. Listen, a lot of times we do things according to fellowships. We do things according to denominations and associations. Take a chance on doing things according to the scripture. Take a chance on doing things according to the scripture. And I want to encourage you with that because it's hard to do sometimes. It's hard to do sometimes, but I want you to be encouraged. By the mercies of God, be encouraged. And um, somebody said, looking like a frog peeping through ice. You funny. (laughs) This thing is about to get deeper. I'm like I said, by the end of next week, I thought I would have it this week. By the end of next week. I'm going to be doing a, um, I'm I'm getting calls out of South Carolina now. (laughs) By the end of next week, I'm going to be doing a very, very lengthy teaching. And um, it's going to be one of my doctrinal positions. And uh, we're we're a body. Iron going to sharpen iron. Some things people will be like, okay, I get that. Some things I say it, it will upset. And ain't no other way around it. But my promise is... I'm going to go by this book, and I'm going to, any position I take is going to be by scripture, not by feeling, or I heard a voice, because I want to be careful with your souls, and at last, ending this uh, broadcast for the night, be careful with your souls. Let me see how many of you are with me at this point. It's about 83 of you. I'm not sure what day yet. Somebody said what day. It's about eight or three of you. If you are seeing any of the things that we talked about in this tonight, go ahead and and let it go. I I was afraid to say that. I was afraid to say that a while back because I I don't want to be one that, oh, you you, a man still or this and other. I know I'm not playing with souls. That's all I can say. I know I'm not playing with your soul. And if you need somewhere safe to gather, that's why also I pray that we can get our online apparatuses where it need to be um, when it comes to audio. I have great singers. I have great musicians. I have terrible audio. And so we get on here and, and in the building People are running around the building. I mean, it's, it is pandemonium, which is a crazy word to use, but it is lit in the building. You go home, you look at it online, and it sounds like we, we ran over a cat or hit a moose or a raccoon got loose in, in a, a group of soda cans, and it, it, is, it is really bad. <laughs> so I even want that to be a worship experience here. I want there to be one. It might not be on the Monday nights. Monday nights, I want to be able to slow down. I, I'm hoping that we get to a point where Sunday mornings, we come online, we have a great worship experience that segues, segues into the word so that people can come here and be in a safe place to worship together and that we get to know each other for real online. And, and there are people who are, are starting to FaceTime me through Facebook, through Messenger, and I am I am uh, speaking with them face to face, and it, it's been a blessing. And I hope we connect more and more, so that this is a spiritual community where we are built up in our most holy faith, in that people's souls are not played with. 
So uh, once again, keep us in prayer. Know that we mean business. This is the unction where we give the word of God and we depend on the spirit of God to edify the people of God. Thank you again to our supporters, to our partners in this work. We appreciate you. We thank you. And we ask that the Lord will forever bless you. And if you would like to contribute to this work, it is uh, RayThePreacher at gmail.com for PayPal and Zelle. It is dollar sign the unction for uh, Cash App. And we're going to continue to build here so that God's people will have a safe place to gather and connect and know that we're not playing with each other's souls. And I can't wait to hear from many of you. Some of you are going to spring on this platform. And uh, I, I can't wait till it's all set up. God bless you and keep you. Heaven smile upon your soul and give you peace. Have a wonderful night.